Hey guys, I hope you're having a good day. Somebody sent me a link about two days ago uh, to a Facebook post that may contain some huge, I'm talking major series spoilers right now, right? Now notice, I, I mean possible One Piece spoilers because as of right now, obviously nothing has been confirmed. Oda always has the last word. And I'm gonna be honest, the moment I started reading the post, and it's a very long post. By the way, before you comment anything, either watch this video uh, to its entire extent or read the stuff because it's, it's pretty long. So I can't really have a good discussion with you guys. You can't discuss things if you don't know the entirety of the material. Now this Facebook post has been shared thousands and thousands of times already. It's crazy. The amount of likes and shares is disgusting. And so when I started reading I think I know enough about the series to know when like a theory is total bullshit and when it has some, some credibility to it. But the fact that these are considered spoilers, it's like a whole different ball game. Now, I've been involved in this like anime and manga thing for a while now. And I remember back when Naruto was going on, a lot of people would send me their theories. So I became kind of like a, like a theory scanner of sorts, right? And I think I know that, you know, when it comes to these things, especially when they're so in-depth, when you have a chunk of text that is telling you beat by beat what's going to happen, w one of two things, all right? Either the, the person is just completely delusional and none of it's going to happen, or, or, and this is what happened to me as I read this, some things begin to make sense and you're like, holy shit, did they just figure out what's going to happen? So, um, that being said, I'm going to go through the spoilers, you know, with you, um, and I'm going to tell you what I think. I'm going to, you know, going to use my bullshit detector to tell you the things that I think are bullshit. And I'm going to tell you things that really, honestly, when I started reading certain paragraphs, I started tearing up because I thought, holy shit, this could actually happen. And I was not expecting it at all, yo. I'm like, okay, all right, let's start. Also, if you don't want to know anything at all, even if it's fake spoilers, you can just leave. That's fine. Another thing is like, you know, when you're in college, your teachers always tell you to use credible sources of information. Obviously, this post is not a credible source, but I will give the writer this. At the end, there's kind of a disclaimer that says that this information was, was given to like a graphic designer or somebody involved in, in like, you know, the, the graphic aspect of One Piece or whatever. But that Oda said or Oda, like this was the original concept that Oda had in his head, the original idea. And obviously, as we know, if you're a writer, sometimes when you get an idea, it's very different than what ends up being on paper. So you get an idea, but then the execution of the idea itself may be completely different. So that's why, you know, it's kind of like, okay, well, it's not exactly going to go down like this, according to the writer, but this is the main concept. The, the core of the idea is in this spoiler, according to this person. Now, basically, this post goes through three arcs. Uh, the Whole Cake Island arc, the Wano arc, and then what happens after Wano. And the, uh, actually, the Whole Cake Island stuff is the... I think it's bullshit. I think a lot of it is bullshit. But let's go through what the post says. So basically, Luffy will beat Cracker, but is severely wounded. So he barely is able to beat Cracker, and they need to get the hell out of there. And they escape with the help of Nami having the Vibri card to sort of manipulate the homies. And they also escape, and this is kind of a weird thing that I, I, again, I think it's total bullshit. I don't see this happening at all. But apparently, Sanji is able to fix things with his family, and his family ends up defending him against Big Mom so that he can escape. So the Vince Mokes kind of form like this wall against Big Mom to let Sanji leave and shit. And then Jinbei uh, also leaves with them. And apparently, according to this, Pudding is also very helpful in their escape. So again, this is the weakest part of the post. Honestly, it kind of made me just want to stop reading it altogether, but I kept going. And the reason why it's so weak is because it lacks a lot of details. A lot of specificity is not given in terms of the events. Almost like the writer just said, I don't really care about Whole Cake Island, let's move on. So according to the post, Luffy and the, the rest of the crew reunite. And they have a plan to start the attack on Wano two weeks after Luffy reunites with them. They're going to be using those two weeks to train their hockey up because if Luffy versus Cracker was a tie, that's a problem, right? And this is where things start getting gross. They start the attack on Wano, all right? And, and this is how they divide up the calamities because before you get to a, a, a Yonko, 
you need to fight like the, the, the commanders, you know, the, the calamities that are under them. In this case, we have Jimbei, Sanji, and Zoro going up against Jack. So it's a three-way team up against one of the calamities. And then the other two, according to the post, are dealt with Inuarashi, Nekomamushi, and an alliance of, of Wano Kuni warriors that are already in Wano. I'm, I'm assuming that includes Kinemon and Kanjiro, and I, I'm pretty sure, I don't know, like I'm assuming Marco is going to show up as well to fight these calamities. Now, when it comes to Kaido, the people that go for Kaido are Law and Luffy. Now, if you remember, we have the supernovas. Some supernovas are already there. We're talking about Kid, Hawkins, Killer, Apu is there as well, and Drake is there. I don't know. Now, according to this, the supernova, they're imprisoned. They're in cages. So they're kind of servants, but once they're done, they go back to their, to their jailhouse or whatever. And according to the post, Usopp is the one to free the supernova, Apu, Hawkins, and, and Kid. They come out and they're like, immediately, they're like, we got to team up against Kaido. All right? So they team up and they get absolutely devastated. I mean, this, this is where it gets gritty. This whole thing turns into an absolute bloodbath. It is disgusting. Now, Oda has this way of starting up with the weakest fights and then working his way up. So what happens, going back to the Jack fight, you know, Jack versus Jinbei, Sanji, and Zoro, according to the post, Jack just doesn't, I mean, he breaks Sanji's leg. He breaks his leg, Sanji is unconscious. Now this is some bad news for the Sanji fanboys, but take it with a grain of salt. Again, nothing's confirmed, all right? Now, once Sanji is on the floor, it seems as if Jack is about to use his strongest attack on Sanji to finish him off. Well, Jimbei steps right in front of him and takes the attack, all right? But unfortunately, it's too much for Jimbei and he goes unconscious too. He gets knocked out, so they both take L's and, you know, I, I thought this is where it starts making sense because Jinbei, does, he does in fact have a history of stepping in to take hits to protect the people that he cares about. Example, Luffy and Marine Ford against Akainu. He took those hits like a boss. Now, well, I mean, kind of blew up his heart, but you know what I mean. The only person who's left in this fight is Zoro, all right? And... You know, this is this is the thing that got me excited because Sanji's down, Jinbei is down, it's only Zoro. What is Zoro gonna do? He's gonna use his technique, he's gonna open up his eye, and this is where I just started fanboying hardcore. He uses his move called Ashura Tensei on some pain slash Nagato type shit from Naruto. Alright? Now, the reason why Zoro doesn't open his eye like constantly, or why he has to keep it closed, is because once he opens it, he uses it, and he can't move afterwards. Kind of like Kakashi. So, yeah, he over you. Well, Kakashi kind of like, he could spam the shit out of it later on. Zoro can't. He uses it once, and he's done. He's out. And this is exactly what happens. So, that being said, moving on to the other calamities, uh, the Duke and, and the Cat, they fight the calamities along with the Wano Kuni warriors, and that's still not enough. The calamities still defeat them, but the Straw Hats come in and they kind of deal like the, the, the final damage. You know, the damage has been building up, and then one calamity, it says here, is finished by Robin, Usopp, and Brooke, and then the other one is finished off by Frankie and Chopper. Um, now notice, notice how these are all team-ups, right? There are no 1v1 fights in Wano Kuni because they would just get wrecked. Obviously, if these results are true, it kind of fucks up the power scaling because when you have like Nekomamushi and Inuarashi not being able to, to tag team against the Calamity and defeat the Calamity, it kind of brings up the question, well, what does that mean about Zoro's power level? That being said, we go back to the fight, uh, you know, the five on one, you know, versus Kaido. And honestly, it says here that the first ones to lose understandably so, are Apu and Hawkins. So Apu and Hawkins, they get defeated, and now we have Kid, Law, and Luffy. Now, once Kid, Law, and Luffy begin to team up together, they start, they slowly begin to deal some damage to Kaido. And this is when Kaido realizes, okay, I have to start fighting seriously. Now, when he starts fighting seriously, it says here that he releases a shockwave, or he does something to destroy half of the island, and then the other half, I guess, kind of like splits in half. So it pretty much just 
I guess you're separating all of the allies on one side of the island, and then you have Kaido and, and the remaining supernovas on the other. Now, here's the part where it just gets kind of like, this is a mess. Kaido breaks Law's legs, all right? So he's out of commission after fighting for a while. Then Kid starts using his awakening, which I don't know what that would look like. I'm guessing he turns everything into metal, into metal spikes and starts shooting them at Kaido. Uh, but even him, like both Law and Kid, end up being unable to fight, but they do deal a significant amount of damage to Kaido, enough to slow him down. And this is where shit just starts getting nasty because Luffy, he starts, you know, he starts throwing punches. They, they, they are screaming all over the place, right? Luffy loves to scream. And then he finally does what we expected him to do, at least I did, Gear Fifth, which is a move that was completely 100% taught to him by Rayleigh. Rayleigh is the one who taught him Gear Fifth. He activates it and the recoil, you know, because every gear, every gear has a cost. The cost of this mode is disgusting. First of all, he can only use it for 45 seconds. 45 seconds on Kaido. And every time he delivers a hit, his body gets crushed because the pressure of the mode is too much. So every time he delivers a hit, part of his bones get crushed. But even Gear 5 is still not enough. Like, Kaido is still conscious after that. And after that, after I read that part, if you notice the writing, it gets kind of vague. Like, the details, they're not, they're like, really, they're not there. So I'm guessing maybe this is what Oda, what he could have meant when he said, I really don't know how Luffy's going to defeat Kaido. Maybe Oda knew that Luffy needed to activate Gear 5th against Kaido, but after that he just doesn't know. So that's why, I guess that's why the writing is so vague. That being said, it's, I mean, obviously we know that he's going to end up defeating Kaido. It seems like both of them end up collapsing after they exchange blows one final time and they kind of collapse simultaneously. Now, this is where this is the thing that got me. We the marines I guess are watching this or something, I don't know. It doesn't matter, but we hear that law begins to scream. And it's not that Luffy became unconscious, it's that he's actually dead. Luffy dies fighting Kaido. And you know, this is the thing that got me because I thought to myself, okay, this is, this is not real. This is not, it can't happen. But then Law does something and I'm like, holy shit. This is the thing that worries me. So the Marines show up in Wano and they're like, listen, you guys are pirates. You need to come with us. And remember, everybody's super fucked up because of the battle that just happened, right? So it's not like they can, they can fight and say like, hell no. And Law says, wait a minute, don't take everybody. Just take me and Luffy. Let everybody else go. Luffy and I will, will come with you. And Luffy's obviously dead, but the Marines say yes. Okay, that's the deal. Obviously, everybody else gets super pissed off because they're like, no, it's Luffy. You can't take him away. Fuck you, Law. Law says, don't worry about this. Just trust me. So he goes with the Marines. And the captain of the unit that takes them away is a guy that was friends with Garp. And Law asks him, I need you to, I need you to let me do something here as a favor. And so the, the captain says, okay, because he knows that Luffy is Garp's, you know, grandson. And according to this, Law performs the immortality surgery on Luffy. So he revives Luffy at the expense of his own life. Law dies. Okay. And it's, it's one of those things that I, I hope doesn't happen, but it just, it fits. It fits because Oda spent a lot of time building up the Opi Opi no Mi, explaining what it does. Doflamingo wanted it for the very same reasons. He wanted to become immortal. All right. And then, you know, Law's goal in the new world was to take down Doflamingo. And Luffy helped him do that. So after that, he was ready to die to take down Doflamingo. So that, that part really hit me because it's like, it kind of makes sense, but I don't want it to make sense. 
and it also it has a little bit of poetry because like Law kind of saved Luffy's life in Marineford. And also if Law dies this way, he kind of ends up dying the same way that Corazon ended up dying, ended up dying for him, giving him the OP OP no main to save himself. So it's kind of like the cycle, the cycle just gets closed for Law in that way. And that, that really got me emotional. And after that, uh, the post basically describes like another another arc similar to Marine Ford, where in which instead of Ace being the one to be executed, it's going to be Luffy uh, who's going to get executed, and everybody starts showing up to try and save Luffy. Obviously, the Straw Hats are there, led by Zoro. Uh, we have the people from Alabasta, Water Seven, possibly Skypeans, Fishman Island. The Minks are there. Lost Crew is there. Even the revolutionaries are there, as well as the Blackbeard pirates show up just, you know, for, for chaotic reasons. And obviously the Luffy Pirate Alliance shows up there as well. And this is the part where I started kind of like dozing off because, for one, it's too much like Marineford. Uh, second, there's no mention of, of like Capone or Bonnie or, you know, what happened to the rest of the supernova. And also there's just no, there's no specificity, no mention of the road poneglyphs, no mention of Raptor or anything related to, to getting to where the One Piece is. So I was just like... Uh, yeah, I'll take this with a grain of salt. I honestly think the strongest part of, of this post is the Wano stuff. And I know some of you may be thinking, wait, how is Luffy going to be executed if he is now immortal thanks to Lost Fruit? Well, it depends on how Oda handles immortality. There's different types of immortality, mainly two. One is where, like, you live forever, you don't, you know, you don't get sick, you know, you never have any health issues or ever, and you live forever unless somebody kills you. And I think that's the one that Luffy has, where in which he won't die naturally, he won't get sick, but he can get murdered. Uh, because the other type of immortality is the one where you, you literally cheat death. Like, even if you have a gun up against your head, like, if, if somebody pulls the trigger, if you have a special type of immortality, the gun will, won't go off. Like, if you jump off a cliff, like, somebody will grab you before you do, or you'll, you'll jump into, like, a you know, just a, a freaking big body of water so you don't die, stuff like that, you know. Um, so I think Oda is going to be handling the first type of immortality, the one that's like less haxed uh, for Luffy, if this happens. Um, that being said, man, please let me know your thoughts. Comment down below. I'll leave the link to the post in the description, obviously. Catch you guys later. Like the video if you did. I appreciate it. Bye.